I'm going to talk to you today about SENA, the Community Engaged Network for All. My name is Sharon Terry, and I'm President and CEO of Genetic Alliance, a health advocacy network with many, many organizations involved in health and disease. I come to this because my own two children have a genetic disorder, and I care a great deal about advancing research on their condition and thousands of others. SENA is a project of Genetic Alliance and nine independent support or advocacy groups, two major academic medical centers, the University of California, San Francisco and the University of California, Davis, one innovative technology, to, technology partner, private access, and one goal to engage people in research. So SENA, the Community Engaged Network for All, is a network built by Genetic Alliance and Private Access on a platform called Platform for Engaging Everyone Responsibly, PEER. SENA is part of something called PCORnet, which is the National Patient-Centered Clinical Research Network. SENA, as I said, is made up of nine disease or condition support groups, Alstrom Syndrome International, AXIS, Dyskeratosis Congenita Outreach, Inflammatory Breast Cancer Research Foundation, Hepatitis Foundation International, Joubert Syndrome and Related Diseases Foundation, MLD Foundation, National Gaucher Foundation, and PXE International. We're facing a problem and trying to solve it. Fewer than 5% of people participate in clinical trials. Building large enough groups for studies is difficult. Diseases are poorly understood. We're missing our greatest resource in all of this, people and their data, their lived experience, their piece of the puzzle. Understanding a disease takes everybody, and when one person's information is missing, the puzzle just isn't complete. It's often said that trying to find people for research studies or clinical trials or registries is like trying to find needles in haystacks. But we believe the haystack is made out of needles Every one of us will participate when given the tools. We all want to bring our piece to the puzzle. We all want to share our lived experience with a disease or a condition. We know that people have vastly different views about privacy and sharing. Some people are in this green end down here where it says 1.5% of people feel it's okay for researchers to use my data or my health information without my consent at all. More people, 16.5%, are on this red end where they don't want researchers to contact them or use their data under any circumstance. But most people fall in the middle somewhere. And lots of different kinds of systems are addressing the people who fall in these nuanced areas. Our model is able to take care of people, to give respect people on all along this continuum, whether you're green, yellow, orange, or red. Everyone needs a fast, simple, intuitive way to express their view, including in real time. And so we also are able to use smartphones and tablets to push to your phone the opportunity to join a registry, answer a questionnaire, respond to clinical trials with a consent, a decline, or a snooze. The high-level architecture of this platform is a little complicated, but it's worth explaining. As I said in the beginning, it's powered by PEER, Platform for Empowering Everyone Responsibly. It's developed by Genetic Alliance and Private Access. This platform has at its core something called Privacy Layer that sets privacy directives. So you can set your permission for sharing your information at any level of granularity. There's a data entry facility, and I'll show a little of that where we can customize this for each of the SENA groups so it looks and feels like that group. So it's easily delivered via a secure iframe, allows a gamified survey questions to come through, sets privacy preferences with guides to assist those, allows dynamic consent, meaning you can change your mind. You might get sicker, your child might have a condition that suddenly requires you share more information. Also has an audit trail so you know who has looked at your information or used it. And in the future, you can request that your electronic health record, lab data, and prescription data are also added to the portal. In addition, there's a data query facility, and here's where the researchers come in. 
they want to search information to see if you're ready for a clinical trial, to see if they're ready to do a study. And this search engine respects the people's privacy directives. And so these privacy direct directives in the middle decide what of this information, your health data and contact info, will be shared in this permissible information database that you can see is bounded by dotted lines, meaning this is actually virtual. It can change and it only is created by these privacy directives interacting with this information. Let's look at the SENA portal in a location. It looks in entirely like where it's located. In this case, we're looking at the Joubert Syndrome and Related Foundation website, and you can see that the website has now inserted the portal into its page. It fits directly into the web page, retaining the top and bottom navigation, so you know you're still in your foundation's website. The headline, colors, theme, videos, any other content is tailored to fit into this. It looks, again, very much like the foundation. Same font here, same font here. Everything is ready because it's patient-centric and supports the new user who might have started, for example, on a different private access-enabled site. I might have first registered with hepatitis, and now I also want to talk about Joubert syndrome in my family. I can come in here and sign in, or I can just begin because I'm new here. I can take the health survey, I can let researchers find me, and I can share this with others. Sometimes we might think that it's complicated to understand our privacy preferences or our sharing preferences. So we present guides from the community. So if you're part of the Joubert Syndrome and Related Disorders Foundation, you'll recognize Stephen Mack, who's the president and the parent of a 10-year-old daughter with Joubert Syndrome. He's got a little video here. I can listen to him. I can understand what he thinks about being part of this project. Same with Nicole Ford, who also has a daughter or Daniel Darty, who's actually a researcher in this condition. We can see under their pictures, little dots that correspond with those uh, that curve I showed you before. And I can see how people feel generally about privacy and about sharing by what's checked. It doesn't mean I have to pick them exactly to fit my sense of privacy and sharing, but it does mean that they're going to give me a good starting place if I pick someone that is somewhat like me or who I trust because the description is like me. I also can set everything manually. I can do it all by myself and pick where I want to go and how I want to set these settings. So let's look at Nicole. We start with the settings that she suggests for us, these moderate privacy concerns. And if I clicked this, I would be able to see her lower and her upper, um, more high privacy concerns. So she's going to give me three sets of privacy concerns, but she's going to give me hers as a starting point. And let's look at what she's giving me. She's giving me the ability uh, to look in three different categories, advocacy and support groups, researchers, and data analysis platforms, and to decide how I want to share within those. In these columns, she's talking to me about who can discover and view my anonymous information, who can export and use my anonymous information, and who can contact, in other words, view and use my personal information to contact me, for example, for another questionnaire or for our clinical trial. So participants use privacy settings to spe specify who can and cannot access and use their de-identified and or their personal contact data and for what purpose. I have three different settings within each of these categories. I can allow, I can deny, or I can do this kind of magic middle, ask me, a kind of maybe. So I have not only a yes, which is allow, and a no, which is deny, but I also have an ask me, a maybe, because maybe today I don't know, and tomorrow I will. And when you ask me, I may say yes or no. I can select a different guide if I didn't like this guide or I wanted to see different settings. I can customize this. In other words, click on this and change this allow to ask me or deny, and so on throughout all of these settings. I can also accept and continue, which will give me a verification of everything that I've selected so that there, I am sure I know what I selected and how it impacts my data being shared. Once I set my privacy settings, I come to the questionnaire. Each of the questionnaires is set up by the disease group within SENA. So the condition-specific or disease advocacy organization has 
put together a questionnaire that they feel is best for those people who live with the condition. Those people who live with the condition know this condition best, and that's what patient-centered outcomes research is about. We present these questions in a gamified manner, meaning you're going to be able to see immediate feedback on how others have responded to the same question. These questions are prepared in something called REDCap. REDCap is an electronic data capture system uh, which is used by hundred, more than 100,000 researchers, more than 1,000 institutions, very widely. And then they're presented in this gamified interface. And then to the extent allowed by each participant, these responses, the data, the health information, can be viewed in REDCap by the foundation, in this case, Joubert, and exported to very popular analytic tools. The questions we support are single choice options, multiple choice checkboxes, and pull down selections, matrix questions and free text, of course. For more information, you can contact Genetic Alliance, and here is my contact information, Sharon Terry, the principal investigator of this project, SENA, the Community Engaged Network for All. Thanks very much.